All right, Bob and Mary, everything that I'm talking here is saving energy, which equals saving money. They are one of the same. And if you're gonna get anything out of this today, it's that they're one of the same. All right, now, insulation's the first thing that I wanna check. I wanna see if you got this uh, hot pink, pink sticky stuff, that old Pink Panther stuff. You got the rock wool, mineral wool stuff they give away for free, or that white fluffy cellulose stuff, the good stuff with the boric acid to keep the roaches out. Now, US Department of Energy, this is our chart to show how much insulation you need in each zone. R30 to R60 is where our zone's at, in uh, zone two here, that's anywhere from 12 and a half inches up to 17 and a half inches. It'd be about three feet of that rock wool mineral stuff, that recycled paper, paper stuff. Now, I wanna check your air ducts. I wanna make sure that you're not losing any uh, um, AC up there, don't have any major leaks. Um, there shouldn't be any whistling, it shouldn't be cold up there. Um, I want to check your attic ventilation. I want to see if you have ridgeline vents, off-ridge vents, gable vents. I want to check your soffit vents and make sure that they're clear. I'm also going to check your registers, make sure that you don't have any mold in them. And I'm going to check your windows and doors. We already talked about the windows. I don't recommend them for energy saving, but your front door, I recommend that weather stripping. The copper stuff's the best, all right? Now the uh, outlet covers, they look just like that. If I slide right behind there, pop the cover back on. Um, really easy, it's not gonna make you rich, but you can you treat yourself to a steak dinner in about 10 years. All right, now <laughs> the steak, uh, the ther thermostats, all right, I'm gonna check your thermostat, make sure it's a programmable thermostat. I'm gonna set your AC down to 65 degrees, let it run, and do a test on it. And your refrigerator settings. Now, really important, your refrigerator should be at five, 40 degrees, your freezer should be at five degrees. I didn't know this, if your fridge is anything below 40, it actually pulls the oxygen out of there, makes all your fruits and vegetables go faster. Anything below five on your freezer, it actually freezer burns your meats more, all right? So if you want that right at five, right at 40, it won't overwork your compressor and run your bill up. Now, what I'm gonna be checking, all right, are all of these things. It's a 14 point inspection, it's pass or fail, whether you got it or whether you don't. Now you have a 275, dollar electric bill on average it's going to be your total monthly waste your total replacement cost monthly waste by not having it on your electric bill and then the replacement cost if you go out to home depot lowe's find a good company um, and get that fixed now let's start with the thermostat all right pete now i can see you guys have a uh, old honeywell over here it's a digital thermostat mm -hmm. all right now your thermostat do you guys program this thing or is it are you able to program it it's a really good idea no to idea. get a programmable thermostat. The reason why for every degree is set it above or below 78, it'll cost or save you about six bucks per degree. So when you leave the house, you should always set your AC up six degrees. And when you come back home, you should set it down six degrees. It could save you up to a third of your AC and your heating cost because if you're gone for eight hours, now if you're gone for 20 minutes, you don't want to set it up or set it down. But if you've ever gone for over an hour or two hours, you always want to set it up six degrees. A programmable thermostat allows you to set it and forget it. The problem with these thermostats is you forget it before you set it, all right? So you always want to make sure that you get a programmable thermostat. It'll generally save you about 10%. All right, really good idea to get those, but I'm going to give you a fail on this one. Now, check the insulated outlet covers. All right, I'm going to have to fail you on that one, but I know you'll go out and do it. It'll take you 10 minutes, all right? Mm -hmm. The light bulbs, now you said that you had most of them, Sam. So About half of them. You had most of them, so I know you're gonna go out and get the other ones. I'm gonna give you a pass on the light bulbs. Thanks. All right? But the weather stripping, again, I'm gonna have to get yeah, that. I'm gonna have to I've been, been putting that off. I've been putting that off. <laughs> okay, but get the copper stuff. It'll be real easy. Just read the directions. Okay. All right, because once you bend copper, there's no putting Pandora back in the box. Okay, <laughs> you're gonna have to get a note. All right, I'll read. Now, on your uh, refrigerator, all right? Let me test the refrigerator. I'm gonna open the door. Get my heat gun, 40 degrees, open the AC, or the freezer, I'm gonna test it. Uh, uh, five, you're good. All right, we'll adjust the fridge a little bit, 40 and five, all right, you're good. All right, Pete, how do I get up into your attic? All right. That little we're on, hole up there. We're on the garage, all right, I'm gonna climb up the attic. I'm always gonna hand my book to Mary, okay? So the wife, I'm gonna hand my book to the wife. Hey Mary, can you please hold this for me? All right, and then Bob, if you could just hold the ladder so I don't fall off of it, just make sure that you hold the ladder for me. Um, I'm gonna climb up there, I'll take a picture for you guys so you can see it. Okay. Right? So here you go, Mary. All right, and Bob, I'm gonna climb up to the top of the ladder. Yeah, I'll hold the ladder. Now I'm hitting the ladder, thanks Bob. Yep. 
Oh my God, you ain't got no insulation up here. God, and it's damn. A hundred, <laughs> it's 120 <laughs> degrees up here. It's only one o'clock in the afternoon. All right, by three o'clock in the afternoon, it's gonna be 150. Now, if I test the top of your insulation right here, okay, it's 110 degrees. And this stuff works like a sponge. It soaked up all the heat that it can take for the day. It's given up. So right on the other side of your drywall is 110 degrees. It's soaked up all that heat. Now you wanna build this insulation up to R38 so it'll bring you up to code, but that'll take care of your winter time bill. All right, trying to put blown in insulation up there to keep the Florida sunshine out is like trying to plug up Niagara Falls with a scotch break. There's just not a big enough sponge to do it. All right, so what I don't see is a thing called radiant barrier that staples to your attic rafters. Now that's a type of heat shield that comes in like, it kind of looks like tin foil. Have you guys ever seen it before? No. I got a piece of it, I'll show you guys later, but it's like tin foil. Okay. It was made by NASA and it reflects 97% of the heat in your attic. Any new house in Florida, they're wrapping the whole house in it, sides, top, roof, everything. Because it's worth seven feet of the white fluffy stuff. Seven feet. Okay, seven feet. Wow. It's got an R rating of 184, but the white fluffy stuff's R38. Now, you got to find a good company to do, put this stuff in, right? They need to do it correctly. It needs to have a four inch air gap. You have to have it overlapped every four inches. Mm -hmm. It needs eight inches down on the bottom for your soffit, eight inches at the top for your airflow for your ridge line. Bed. Okay, it's really important. You have to cover everything. It's got to go over the garage. It's got to go over everything. You got to make sure you get the real stuff too, right? Because there's a lot of different products out there, a lot of me twos. All right, the stuff around your ductwork is considered radiant barrier, but if you put it up on your attic rafters, it ain't gonna do nothing. It'll ruin everything you just did. All right, waste a bunch of money. So you make sure you get the real stuff. It's double-backed Mylar 5 foil. All right, if you get a good company that it knows what they're doing and installing it and they got the real stuff, there's no way they can have bad reviews. So just check the good reviews because if you install radiant barrier right and it's the real stuff, it changes your life. So it's a really good idea. Now, I can see you got this ridgeline vent up at the top here, yeah. and you have your soffit on the side. I do. Those are great. That's for wind to come through, circulate your air, and then blow out the top. The problem is, is that in Florida, we're not known as a windy state. Okay, It's just stagnant air all the time. You gotta get something to pull that hot air out. Because right now, you just got big oven vents. It's 120 up here. They're just venting the oven, all right? You put an att attic fan up there, That'll work pretty good, but you're using power to save power. Doesn't make a lot of sense, right? They have solar attic fans now. They got a panel about this big. It goes right into your attic and there's a temperature gauge. So when it gets above 90 degrees in your attic, that solar panel runs the fan and sucks all that hot air out, okay? Really good idea. So you take care of your summertime bill with the insulation, take care of your wintertime bill with the radiant barrier, and then that attic fan pulls any extra hot air out. You see the problem? Yeah, I see, see the, the problem. Solution? That'll help. Perfect. You just want to make sure you get good contractors, the white fluffy stuff. Make sure that you get the Home Depot on sale. Be about 250. The attic fan. It's really important. You want to make sure it's made in the United States, and you want to make sure that you have good warranties and a roofing company installed. Okay, so you want to make sure that they have a roofing contractor's license as well, because it's got to go underneath your shingles. Okay. All right, so just yeah. be really careful who you got doing it, and make sure that you got a good made in the United States fan. Because if you get the Chinese fans, they'll break down every two years. Trying to get the warranty information is like speak a Mandarin in Beijing. Okay. So now let's move on to your hot water. So Mary, if you could just write fail, fail, and fail. All right. <laughs> And we're gonna move over to our hot water heater. Now, you got an old dinosaur over here. Oh my God. This thing's a big tin tank. Don't hit it too hard. There's another inch of insulation. I'm trying to break it so we can get you a new one, all right? There's another inch of insulation, all right? And then there's another tin tank. And then you see these two boxes that I was telling you about? Yeah. Right over here, 4,500 watts and 4,500 watts a piece. And these things are zapping that hot water 24 7. Okay, they never shut off. And what happens is we have hard water, all right, in Florida, and it starts to shale up on those elements, build up, build up, build up. So now you have an inch of insulation, so all burn up. And now you have a bunch of shale on these elements because you haven't drained it. Now, if you do want to drain it, the plug's right there. You hook a hose up to it, you twist it, but it's been eight years, guys, all right? The damage is already done. Right, so what I recommend is a solar hot water heater. 
Now, it's not like those solar panels that you see on your neighbor's houses. Those are the bunch of solar panels. Those produce electricity. A solar hot water heater doesn't use any electricity. It uses it, it heats hot water up manually by the sun's rays, the radiation. All right, now a solar hot water heater doesn't use any electricity ever. It's a forever hot water heater. They're made out of glass, copper, aluminum. They last forever. There's nothing to break on them. And there's no electricity running to heat the hot water. No elements. All right, those are the best. Those are a forever hot water heater. Now, there's also a hybrid hot water heater that costs You're so, recording us. Hey, Chris. I'm in the middle of, I'm, I'm uh, just, right. just doing another pitch on video and then sending them home. Okay. I didn't realize how late it was. Sorry, guys. Um, now, what time is it? Um, uh, five, um, I'll get you guys out of here. I'll get you out early tomorrow. Um, so, hot water heater. No. Um, so, now, with your hot water heater, if you can see right over here, your energy guy, right, it says that it'll cost you $520 per year. But if you look down, it says based, there's th four statistic guys, based on a 1994 at eight cents per kilowatt, 2004 at 8.6 cents per kilowatt, uh, 2007 at 10.65, and then 2012 at 12 cents per kilowatt. That's the highest one that they make, 12 cents per kilowatt, okay? So that's the highest one. So every single one that you do, you're gonna be able to do this equation. Mm -hmm. So you have, uh, now it says 19.94 at eight cents per kilowatt. Now, we're paying 16 cents now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So 520 in 1994 cost 104, or 1,040 in today. And that's brand new. Just to get hot water. Imagine how much it's costing you right now that it hasn't been maintained over the last next 18 mm -hmm. years. Okay, it's costing you upwards of sixty dollars a month. You put in a solar hot water heater, it'll save you sixty dollars a month. It doesn't cost anything to run. All right, now um, let's check your AC. All right, now I'm gonna go around. We set it down earlier. I'm gonna test your temperatures coming out. Okay, so we got 61, uh, 63, 65. Okay, it looks like you guys are probably gonna need it. You. Now you guys told me it was about 13 years old. It is. It was brand new when you when you guys moved into it the was. house, but it's yeah. gotten gotten some use, and you guys haven't really had any insulation as well, so it's kind of overworked it's itself. It's running all the time. It's a really good idea to switch it out. If you switch it out from a 10 sear like you're at now to a 16 sear, all right, with a variable speed air handler, you put a UV air filter in there, it kills all the mold, bacteria, the coronavirus kills everything before it blows it around your house like it is now. Yeah. Then you put in a Nest Learning thermostat, all right, with a humidistat on there, and a new 16 sear compressor, it'll cut your bill by 30, 35%. Okay, really? It'll be really cool in here, protect your house, make your family really comfortable. It's a really, really good idea. Um, and uh, um, the best AC units right now are a Lennox Concord in New York. Those are gonna be my favorite ones because they're the biggest bang for your buck. Mm -hmm. Now you can go with a carrier and you can go with an American Standard train, absolutely. They are the best units train in American Standard, but you're gonna pay about $2,000 more and for what you're getting out of it, the value's really not there. All the warranties are the same, so they're all the same. They don't last the any longer. The they same don't last thing. any longer. Just a different name on there. Different. Well, not the American standards of the trains. They are the best. Are the okay. Best. They are the absolute best. They're the most efficient units. But for the price of them, it's not worth what you're getting in this market. I see. Absolutely. All right. All right. I can get you one if you want. Yeah. Three thousand dollars more. I don't pay. About three thousand dollars. All right. I'm not now, gonna do it. I'm gonna come back to the table, guys. All right. Now I've done. Uh, that's enough with my energy analysis. Let's see what you what you guys need. Okay. All right. Now insulation. You guys failed on insulation. Yeah. It's a really good idea. Build that stuff up to R38. All right. Save you ten percent. About twenty-seven dollars a month. Okay. Now you said you got a two thousand square foot house. It's about two dollars and fifty cents, or two dollars and eighty. Two. We're gonna use two twenty-five because it's easy. All right, it's two twenty-five a square foot. If you get the good stuff for the R thirty-eight from Home Depot, it costs you about forty-five hundred bucks. Okay. Okay. Forty-five hundred bucks for insulation. It'll work pretty good, but then, just like you got now, you only got four inches. Yeah. Nobody would ever put four inches in. No. It gets so hot, breaks down, turns right into dust. Now, radiant barrier is a little different. That'll save you twenty. 
75% of your electric bill over a quarter. You go from no insulation to seven feet worth of insulation. The other difference is this stuff lasts forever, okay? It never breaks down, it never dissipates. Um, once you put it up there, it's got a lifetime warranty on the stuff if you get the real stuff. Now, that'll save 25% of your bill, which is about $65 a month. Now the cost of it's a little different. It's got to go over your 2,000 square foot house plus your garage, 2,400 times 1.5 for your pitch factor. That's mm. 3,600 times 350 a square foot. You're going to be about 15,000. Okay, for radio. Oh, okay. All right, and I highly recommend that. Attic fans, really, really important. You're going to need two for 2,000 square foot under air. Your 2,400 square foot under the roof. Um, that solar attic fan, if you get a good made in the United States fan, it'd be about sixteen, seventeen hundred. Cost you about thirty six hundred for two of them, but it's gonna pull all that hot air out, all right, which is gonna save you about ten percent, about twenty seven dollars a month. Now, a solar hot water heating system will save you thirty percent of your electric bill. Or what did we find? Your hot water heaters cost you? Yeah, about sixty bucks a month. Dollars a so year. It'll save you about sixty bucks a month. Okay, but yeah. a solar hot water heater. It's right around 12, 13,000 if you want a good one. You don't want any of the flat glass systems at Home Depot. No. Uh, they, they do not work. They only get sun from about two to four. Okay, you need to be able to get sun the whole day. All right. Now, 13,000 for a good one, for an opaque glass system. Um, and a 16th year higher. Now, you guys are about two and a half ton. Uh, really good two and a half ton. It's gonna cost you right around 14,000, 14,500. Um, is a good price on that for a 16 sear or higher. You do not want to go with another 13 sear. No, right? from 10 to is too Go bad. with an efficient unit, okay? Mm -hmm. Rule of thumb for every 600 square feet, you want one ton. You guys are at 2,000, you're gonna need about a three and a half. All right. Now, before I show you guys with this, I just want to go over your hot water heating system. Yeah. Now, that hot water heater outside, remember I showed you the big tin tank and then the other tin tank? I did. And your two elements here and here? Yeah. Okay, you got 4,500 watts and 4,500 watts, all right? 9K total, all right? Now, but what do we use this hot water for, this big dinosaur out there? What do you use it for showers? That's shower. it. Okay, we use it for dishes. Dishes, maybe laundry. We use it for laundry. All right, but we can't think of anything else that we'd use hot water for. No, mm -hmm. we need it. Now, for showers, you got two of you in here, take about 15 minutes shower piece. Yeah. 15 minutes times seven days, or 15 minutes times two, that's about 30, 30 minutes, minutes times seven days. Call it five hours in showers. Yeah, about All right. right. Five hours in dishes. You do dishes twice a week. Yeah, or twice, twice, twice a day. Twice a day. <laughs> yeah. All right, for about an hour. Not twice yeah. a week. It costs you about 14 hours in dishes. <laughs> yeah, okay. listen. Okay, laundry, what do you do uh, I'm on hot laundry? Do you uh, one, one or two yeah. loads a week. Yeah. Let's that, call it know? two loads for two hours, okay? So, what are we using hot water for? We're using it five hours in showers, 14 hours in dishes, plus two hours in laundry, that's 21 hours. Now, I'm a nerd, all right? Now, when I got at this table, we all have something in common, right? God gives us seven days out of the week. He gives us 24 hours in each one of those days. That's 168 hours. Now, that hot water heater is running 24 seven, all right? The whole 168 hours, but you're only using it 21 hours, which means 147 hours. <laughs> you guys are paying for hot water, $60 a month, but never use it. That's why it's the biggest waster. And in comparison, all right, think about your light bulbs in your house. Would you yeah. guys ever turn on all your light bulbs all no. at once? No, never. No. Stupid, right? right? You wouldn't leave them on all night long, right. and you wouldn't leave them on all month long. No. But the average home has 60 or 30, 60 watt light bulbs, which is 1800 watts. Okay. Okay. Your hot water heater, those go into five times and it's on 24 seven. So you would never leave your lights on all night long. You wouldn't leave them on all month long, but your hot water heater is costing you five times that much and you're only using it 21 hours. That's why it's the biggest waster and that's why I recommend a solar hot water heater. It doesn't cost anything to run, all right? Now, what you're gonna save, we're gonna save $27 with insulation, all right? Keeping all that heat in during the winter time. We're gonna save 
$65 with Radiant Barrier here in Florida. All right, okay, keep it all yeah, that heat out. That makes good sense. Okay, we're gonna save $27 with an attic fan, save 60, okay, with a solar hot water heater, and we'll save 35 with an AC unit. $214 we're gonna save. How much does it cost to save that amount? All right, well, we got 4,500 plus 15, that's 20,000, plus 36, plus 13, that's 36, plus 14, that's gonna be about $40,000, right? $45,000. All right, now you can do some of it, you can do none of it, you can do all of it, it's up to you, but the government has incentives for these. They're actually paying for this stuff to go into your house. And the reason why is because we're 